I have been using Tesla's full self-driving beta for a few months now. And while it has gotten a lot better since the first day I used it, it's still not done. And it sounds like the beta is gonna be rolling out to a lot more people, we think. We're not exactly sure, but it sounds like everybody in the US is going to get a button, possibly even Canada. And Elon Musk said Tesla is going to ask regulators in Europe, but in my opinion, yeah, that's probably not happening. And it seems this button, which will be added to the service menu in the car, is just going to let anyone click it, agree to some terms, and download the full self-driving beta. So the point of this video is for me to give you some tips and tricks to use the beta to have the most fun while, of course, still staying safe. I also want to emphasize all of this is just my opinion. At the end of the day, it's your car. You can do whatever you want. Just stay safe out there. And just keep in mind, everything I'm saying is relevant as of the upload of this video. Some of the things I'm saying may become outdated because the beta does update really quickly, gain new features, get better at stuff, and change in certain ways over time. So while full self-driving beta is tons of fun, it is still a level two system, meaning the driver is in complete control of the car. It's a little strange because the car is capable of doing everything almost from point A to point B, but it can make mistakes and you do need to supervise it at all times, preferably with a hand on the wheel, although you can go short periods of time, up to say 20 or 30 seconds without a hand on the wheel. You should have your hands close if they're not actually on the wheel, ready to take over. So if you haven't seen my videos, welcome to the channel. I would encourage you to go back and watch some of those. You'll learn a lot just from seeing how the system works. I have gotten really used to it. When I first got it, it was a little difficult to let it make some maneuvers, especially left turns. Uh, but over time, you kind of learn and you grow with the system and you figure out what it's good at at, what it's bad at, when it's going to make a mistake, and even when maybe previously you thought it was going to make a mistake, it actually is going to do a good job, and you learn to kind of trust the system a little bit. So while it's fun to push the system and let it do everything on your drive, the point of the beta is to get interventions, is to get me or you driving the car, and when it does something wrong or weird or annoying, you take over. You either press the little report button, which at this point we're not sure if everybody's getting that or just the smaller group of beta testers, or you take over and you intervene. And all of that data is sent back to Tesla and they see, okay, this person, they turned the wheel and the car wasn't gonna do that, so let's see why the person took over and why the car didn't do what they wanted. That way the car can become a lot more natural in the moves it makes and it can also get better at stopping for traffic, going when it's supposed to go, making turns either tighter or more wide as it needs to do. All of those interventions are really important. So first of all, you have to own full self-driving. Hopefully you purchased it before it was $10,000. If not, you can purchase it uh, whenever the button's available. If you think that you want to use the beta and you haven't bought full self-driving, you can pay the $10,000. It's usually available on your car within minutes, if not seconds after purchase. If you don't have a lot of experience with autopilot and full self-driving though, before using this beta, I would highly encourage you to use normal autopilot or normal full self-driving for a little bit, maybe a week or so, before you turn the beta on, just to kind of get used to how autopilot works works before you jump to that next level. So once the system is enabled in the menu, you want to enter a destination. Of course, you don't have to. You can turn the beta on and let it kind of drive around. But without knowing where to go, it's not really that productive. Uh, and in my experience, it's not that fun. Uh, it's more fun to put in a destination and see where the car's gonna go and let it attempt to get there. In my experience, it's best to get on the road and get driving and then turn the beta on. Well, I can turn it on in my driveway and it actually does work okay. It will exit my driveway and do a pretty good job going on the dirt roads and getting me where I need to go. Uh, it's best if you start it off on the road. If you're in a parking lot or something, as of the recording of this video, the beta doesn't work that well in parking lots. Again, it can try to do things, it can attempt to do them, but it's really not that good. And turning out of parking lots onto roads, it's just not there yet. Tesla is still working on start and end of drive. What we have now, as of this video, is city streets. So you're on the street, you turn it on, and then it can attempt to do everything. Flip side of that, when you get to your destination, wherever the pin on the map is, that's where the car is gonna go. A lot of destinations have the pin just in the street. So your car will slow to a stop at the pin. At that point, you just take over and park yourself or get yourself to exactly where you wanna go. If you've been using autopilot for a while and you're really used to it, the biggest change that the beta brings is that it's a lot more free than autopilot. So when autopilot or full self-driving on the public build is enabled, it's very kind of rigid and predictable and it stays in the lane and it obeys the lines and it doesn't really go around stuff. It just kind of goes. Beta, on the other hand, as it needs to do as a competent driver, will sometimes go over the lane lines as it needs to. It'll go around objects. It'll slow down differently. So you just have to pay a little more attention because like I said, the beta is just more free. That's really the best way I can describe it. The car has a lot more power to make decisions and do what it needs to do. With that said, 
the car is not gonna do anything you don't let it. If your hands are on the wheel, nothing's gonna happen that you don't want to happen unless you let it happen. I and the other beta testers have been using this for months now and there have been no accidents. So of course the system could make a mistake and cause an accident, but with attentive drivers, I really believe that an attentive driver with full self-driving, yes, even the beta, is gonna be safer than a driver on their own. Just remember, interventions are good. That's you telling the car, hey, you made a mistake, that data gets sent back to Tesla and they can see why you intervened and they can make the system better over time. There's a lot of doubt out there that Tesla can do this and I've had my doubts as well, but seeing the system evolve, having my car over the past two years only, has just been incredible. When I first got my car, it could not do automatic lane changes on the freeway without me telling it to do it. And then we got an update and it could. And to be honest, when that first came out, it wasn't that good. I'd have a lot of times where the car would start to make a lane change and for no reason, no other cars, no shadows, nothing I could perceive, the car would mid lane change just swerve back into its lane pretty abruptly. And I really didn't like that. I was like, what is this? You know, this is not that good. And just a few months worth of updates, I mean, that pretty much never happens now. I shouldn't say never, but it's pretty close to never where lane changes like that are just, they're, they're next to perfect. Whereas before I had that experience of them not being very good. So I think the beta over time is gonna follow the same path where you get it and you're gonna be like, what the heck? Why are you making a weird turn? Or why are you stopping early? Or you're not going around this person in the road soon enough? Over time, that's all gonna get way better. On the self-driving screen, there's a lot of different colors for all of the different objects. So right now, everything is just boxes, just different shaped and sized boxes for cars, trucks, people, bicycles, all of those different things, and they all have colors. So I'll go over some of the main colors. There are some I'm not so sure about and some I don't see very often, but these are the main ones. Green boxes on the screen, that means we're following that object, we're behind it and we're going in the same direction. Blue is the same direction as us, but we're not following them, so in an adjacent lane. Red means it stopped. Yellow is traffic in the opposite direction. You'll notice on my videos, this is pretty difficult to see, but in person, this is really obvious and easy to see. Purple is driving through an intersection. White is one I've seen very rarely, and I do not remember what it's supposed to mean. Dark green pedestrian means it's waiting for the pedestrian. So as you are driving, if there's somebody in a crosswalk or something, you'll see their dark green. That means the car is waiting for them. Even if you're at a stoplight, let's say you're not gonna go. If a person's walking in front of you, they will be dark green. That means the car sees them and is not gonna go until they're out of the way. And then the dots on the boxes are the back of objects, but it's very good at telling the back from the front of vehicles, people, bicycles, all of that. So some things that the beta cannot do as of this video, it cannot park itself. So you do have the same auto park that's already in full self-driving, but the car will not go up to a parking spot by itself and do that. Again, at the end of drive, you pretty much have to take over. Sometimes depending on where the pin is on the map, it will take you right to the door of an establishment, uh, but then you would still need to park the car at that point. It seems, as of this video again, that full self-driving beta cannot go into reverse. I expect this will come eventually, especially because Smart Summon, of course, will go forward and reverse as it needs to to move around a parking lot. But as of now, if you go to like a dead end, the car is just gonna straight up tell you, cannot complete this maneuver, please help out. Drive-throughs also <laughs> are a no-go for now. But overall, the beta is really capable and it's really fun. Right turns, it nails them. It's very good at them. Stop signs, very good. Stop lights, traffic lights, very good. Left turns are where it starts to get a little sketchy. If you have a green arrow on a left turn, the car is excellent. Second you get that green arrow, boom, the car's gonna go. Unprotected lefts, meaning you have maybe a green light, but cross traffic also has that green light. Uh, that can be a little scary. I can't think of anything off the top of my head where the car was going to go at any point, but sometimes it does this thing where it creeps forward for visibility or it creeps forward getting ready to make a turn and it can scare you a bit. And you know what, in those situations, it's best to just hit the brake. There's no reason to be risking it. And you'll send that back to the autopilot team. They'll see, hey, we know this was just creeping forward to kind of get ready for the turn, but for whatever reason, what the car did wasn't good for the driver, so they intervened. Another big thing that I think might catch people off guard is you don't realize how much of driving is just personal opinion. <laughs> now, of course, there's laws and everything that people have to follow, but the speed you go on the highway, the way you make turns, the speed you make turns, how close you get to other cars, a lot of that is just up to the individual driver. And again, while there may be the technical correct way to do it, not everybody agrees on that. And you'll even see in traffic, if one move is legally the correct move, 
if enough people don't do that, the flow of traffic just has to follow. And I've been surprised making these videos. I kind of do this on purpose sometimes where I'll say one thing uh, and then I'll get a bunch of replies in the comments saying like, no, 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 that's wrong. You got to do it the opposite way. And then the next video I'll say the opposite way. And of course I'm sure it's different people, but then they come in and for that opposite way that I was told I should do it, I get a bunch of comments. No, 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 that's wrong. You have to do the opposite way, which is what I did originally. So every driver has their opinion of the right way to do these things. And the beta has its opinion. I don't know if that's really the right way to say it, but it has a way that it does these things. And while it might not technically be wrong, you as a human might go, oh, I don't like that and want to take over or just not like what it's doing, even if technically what it's doing isn't wrong. But if this ever does actually become level five full self-driving, uh, I know in my opinion, I won't care. I'll be chilling in the car. If the Tesla wants to go a little slow or turn a little fast or something, I'm not driving. What do I care? Let it do whatever it wants. And then the last two big things that I'll warn you about is for stop signs. Uh, it makes California stops, meaning it rolls most stop signs. It doesn't always do this. And if visibility is poor, the car definitely makes a complete stop and then slowly inches out to get a better view. Uh, but most of the time it does a California rolling stop. It'll go down to two or three miles per hour and continue. Uh, that's another thing I get comments on all the time. I get equal amount of comments that say, wow, I love that the car does that as I do comments that say, what the heck? I'm going to get a ticket. I hate that the car does that. Unfortunately, at this point, it's not an option for you or I to change, but we have seen some screenshots where the autopilot developers have actually enabled this option. So maybe we'll get to control that eventually. If we want to make complete stops or not, we can turn that on or off. And then the other sign that I interact with pretty frequently is yield signs. Currently, again, in the settings of autopilot, it's set to stop at all yield signs, which we know is not correct, but that's what the car does. So be ready for that as you approach your yield sign, even if there's not a single car in sight, the car is going to make a complete or a rolling stop at that yield sign rather than slowly move through it. I'm sure there's a million more things I could tell you about. And if you have any specific questions I didn't mention in this video, please comment them down below and I will definitely answer you. Uh, but overall, when you get the beta, just be safe, be responsible and enjoy it. It is a heck of a lot of fun and we're part of something pretty big here. Uh, eventually these cars are gonna be so good, it's gonna be mind blowing. And I think we're gonna get to that better than human level uh, sooner than a lot of people think. Level five, steering wheel optional, might take a little longer. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, but overall, I'm loving the beta. I cannot wait for all of you who've been watching my videos to get the beta. Thank you so much for sticking around and, and watching the videos. Uh, but overall, I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below and you will see me in the next video. So Autopilot and I are happily driving along 